today's episode, we are going to show you and demonstrate flush setting. All right, so let me show you the project. We have gone ahead and set one of the sapphires flush set. Now the project is to show you how that's done by doing it equally and symmetrically on the other side of the ring. Now, here is a parcel of fine sapphires that I have to choose the correct size and mate to the one that's in there. And we do that by using what is called a leverage gauge. I actually have a very uh, fine electronic one. We also use calipers so that we can measure the equal distance from the uh, center stone then once that's determined we use a drill bit to drill the initial hole and then we pick the correct size of the cutting burr we want to create the opening for the sapphire so i've measured the distance to the center of the stone from the other side and it is the distance that the calipers are apart from the edge of the center stone and you can see where a mark I have made on the ring. That is where we're going to use the drill and create our first opening. But before we do that, we want to know what sapphire we're going to use. I happen to know the other sapphire was a 3.1 millimeter stone when I set it. So all I need to do is from this parcel I have, measure the various stones and match the color and the size and the cut, usually possible as well. I've gone ahead and done that and I've determined this one on the end is the one I want to use. And we're going to first use a burr smaller than the, what we need. And I've gone ahead and picked that and measured that one as well. What we're going to do is we have our pilot hole started. We're going to finish drilling. This is a solid made ring. In other words, there's no carved out area on the inside. So we have a little bit of metal to go through. Now, what's important, these drills are high speed drills, but every um, few moments, it is necessary to lubricate the drill bit with what is um, most commonly really used, believe it or not, is natural beeswax. But other things can be used as well. All right, you can see from the movement of the bit that we have gone all the way through the gold and have now a hole on the inside. As you can see the existing, excuse me, that Sapphire has, now we have one on the other side as well. That allows for cleaning of the gemstone when you go all the way through. Very important and necessary when done right. All right, so now let's go ahead and burr out and open up that hole we created to the proper diameter needed for flush setting. I have the burr that I'm going to use to open out the uh, drill bit hole. I've already started a little bit. We're going to finish it. What you want to do is use a burr a little bit smaller than your stone. That way it almost snaps into the opening. You can't put gold back on, so you want to make sure that you approach this step as a jeweler very slowly. And you can see the gold literally flying up. And that's why it's, uh, jewelers have a drawer to catch that metal. Over time, that little bit of gold adds up. All right, this is very close to the diameter of the stone I'm using. So it's time to just see how well, clean it out, that stone fits or doesn't at this point. We want it to drop down into the opening. 
leaving a rim of metal higher than the edge of the stone. Now, because I, what uh, is called undercut the bezel, it often, with a little pressure, can snap in at this point, and that's what I'm gonna see if we've done it to where we can. In the olden days, so to speak, and I actually learned from a uh, original Italian goldsmith and his techniques, I would have had to do this with a hand tool that's just a metal head and go in and with physical force push that bezel down around it and burnish it, so to speak, many multiple times. Or take a little tool and with a hammer do what you're getting ready to see me do with a machine. I learned it the old way. Then he allowed me to use the new modern tools. It was a great way to be taught at a very young age. I was about 20 and a great experience. But basically efficiency, this modern tool is more effective. This is the part that you're really getting to see the, uh, what goes on behind the bench because setting that stone leaves all those tool marks no matter whether you use an automated kind of uh, pneumatic hammer there or if you do it by hand. But the key is to removing those tool marks and that's what we're going to do next with this sanding disc. So we're going to come over here because remember, I, uh, the drawer's out underneath me. There's gold that comes off of that ring, and every goldsmith catches it in the bench. And about every year, you send it in and, and get the money for it. I have my finer wheel, and I am going to work on this side of the ring, cleaning up the rest of the scratches, and evening up that little edge of the bezel around the sapphire. Let me get going. Oh, well, so you can tell when a job has been done right when you have to look at it with magnification to see which side you added the stone to. As you can see, we have matched and balanced the ring very well. I chose sapphires to pull out the blue in the very unusual center zoned cabochon sapphire. And flush setting is a technique that is one of the safest and will last one of the longest because there's no wear to that little rim of gold. So, thank you for joining me in today's episode where we covered flush setting, the techniques and the difficulties of it. So, welcome and thank you for joining me in the How Do You series where we cover things that happen behind the bench. I look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you.